All right, guys, we got something a little bit different today. This time it's the Foxwell NT-809 Automotive Diagnostic Scan Tool. Foxwell contacted me and they said, would you like to take a look at the NT-809 that we've got? And I said, absolutely, send it over, I'll check it out. Let me open this up and we'll see what comes inside. So right away we can see that it's a kind of a hard canvas case instead of a blow mold plastic case, which I kind of like. That That's pretty nice with a handle on it. And uh, double zipper here. And inside the case is this mesh compartment, and inside there is a charging cord, which is USB-A to USB Type-C, which is nice. I like to see more and more things going to Type-C. And, of course, the OBD-2 cable. This is a corded scan tool, not a, not a Bluetooth. Um, the one downfall is I had noticed that this cord was a tad bit too short, not a deal breaker. Uh, extension OBD2 cords are available all over the internet for pretty cheap. Uh, the other thing was, just to show you as an example, this is my Samsung power brick that I supplied myself. It, this scan tool does not come with a power brick. It only comes with the charging cable. And not, again, not a deal breaker, but you know it's 2022 now. This is a rechargeable device. I feel it should come with a charger. But again, not a deal breaker. So then... Down here is another compartment. You've got the owner's manual, and this owner's manual is actually pretty darn nice. It's well written, easy to read, and it explains how, to, how the scanner operates. And one of the things I really like is uh, when you get towards the middle here, you know, there's a definition for, every, for everything on the scan tool. It pretty much gives you, if there is something on the scan tool that you didn't know what it stood for, like EPB, you know, it's, it's electronic parking brake. And as you go, it'll say, you know, battery replacement or throttle body alignment or diesel particulate filter or, uh, steering angle sensor it gives you a brief description of what everything is and what all the abbreviations are so that's really nice and then of course it comes with a packing list you get the scan tool the manual uh, the uh, quick start guide the obd2 cord and the charging cable which we already went over and of course the quick start guide itself put those back in there and then, of course, the scan tool. Okay, the scan tool itself is pretty nice. Actually, very solid, well built. On the back, I, I put a piece of duct tape over my serial number, but it does have the kickstand, which I love. Absolutely have to have that. Um, no camera on this one. That's okay. Don't really need it. Uh, on the top, it has the data port for the OBD2 cable, uh, USB Type A port, USB Type-C for charging, and of course the on and off button. So all right, let's get this thing hooked up. Nice. Okay, let's get started looking at the maintenance features here. We go into maintenance. These are all the maintenance special features. Every different manufacturer of scan tool has a different, they call these things something different. Um, Foxwell calls it maintenance. Somebody else may call it special functions. Some Someone else may call it uh, service functions. But you get the point. As you can see, this one has ABS, AFR adaption, battery control, CVT, clutch adaption, dashboard, DPF, EGR reset, EVAP smog test, electronic parking brake, fuel pressure, gear learn, uh, sensor learn, headlamp adjust, injector balance or injector coating, um, change the language, oxygen sensor. Uh, I'm not sure what OBDS has got a picture of a kid seat there. That's something that I'm not familiar with. Oil life reset. Again, ODS installation, not sure. Fuel pump, airbag, steering angle sensor, seat match, turbo, trans adaption, TPS, TPMS, automatic transmission oil, and window doors. Like I've said in other videos, just because it shows it on the screen of the scan tool doesn't mean every vehicle ever made is capable of running everything on here. A lot of this stuff only uh, functions on fairly new and modern vehicles. Like, we're sitting in a 2006 GMC, and almost all of this doesn't apply to us. There's a few of them on here that do, like the ABS, we can do the auto bleed, and down here we can go to injector, which will give us uh, an injector balance test and a cylinder balance test, which is really nice. Um, but uh, let's check out the ABS service, for example. And uh, we'll click GM going to load. We'll go smart VIN. 
so we don't have to type it in manually. That's us. Yes. Manual. Up level. Under. Rear drum. This truck doesn't have a vehicle stability enhancement system, so we'll go to standard automated bleed. Okay. Stop vehicle. Okay. Yep. 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 Hopefully, you can hear it running in the background. There it is. There's the auto bleed. Now, I'll say this again. Just because the scan tool is capable of doing an auto bleed doesn't mean every vehicle ever manufactured that you plug into is going to be able to perform an auto bleed. The, the, the manufacturer has to program that functionality into the vehicle itself along with it being programmed into the scan tool. Both ends of it needs to know about the other end for it to work properly. So, and also, no, I know I'm going to get this in the comments, no, auto bleed does not remove air from the system completely. It gets the stuck air bubbles out of the ABS module, then the bubbles from the ABS module go out into the brake lines where the air bubbles can then be bled the traditional way with the wrench at the bleed screws and someone pumping the pedal or a power bleeder or something. It does not remove air from the system. It just moves it to another part of the system where it can then be bled the traditional way. So I just wanted to add that in there. Like I said before, the functionality of every one of these is going to be different based on whatever vehicle you're plugged into. But on this 2006 GMC truck, we'll go into Injector, and we'll hit GM, and we'll go Smart VIN. This one will do either a cylinder power balance or a fuel injector balance. So the cylinder balance, so the cylinder balance, this is a little bit of live data here for you to m monitor while you're doing this. But across the bottom here, we've got cylinders one through eight. And just for an example, if I click number eight, immediately it shuts the spark off to that cylinder and it'll start to run rough. And then I can enable it by enabling it by hitting the enable button. So let's see if you can hear this in the, let's see if you can hear this in the microphone. So Turn the spark off in cylinder number eight. It helps you find a bad injector, maybe a, a bad uh, ignition coil. You know, if you've got an engine that's running rough, and you can go through and turn off each individual cylinder, and when you get to the one cylinder that when you turn it off, it doesn't change, well, that's the cylinder you've got a problem with. So that's a pretty slick deal. And then as far as the fuel injector balance, I can't do it right now because... The engine's running, and I don't have a fuel pressure gauge with me, and I don't feel like flooding the cylinders right now. But what you would do is you would put a fuel pressure gauge on the fuel rail up there at the, at, the, at the test port. And then you can turn on each fuel injector individually, and the scan tool does it automatically for a predetermined exact amount of time. And you watch the pressure drop on your pressure gauge. And if it drops from, you know, 60 to... 50 or whatever, Just those are just example numbers, then you've lost 10 PSI, let's just say. And if you go through and do all the injectors, and they all lose right around that 10 PSI, but one of them loses like 12 or 14, well, the one injector that's different than the others, and now you know which injector you're having a problem with. So it, that's a pretty handy test also to have. Let's go back. Now we'll look at the diagnostics. Uh, we'll, again, we'll go, we can either pick your vehicle by region, And we can pick GM and go from there. Or we'll just hit the VIN automatic read. And we'll let it find it for us. All right. There we go. Yes. Four button. Manual. Up level. Under 86. Rear drum. Now, at this point here, we can either do a quick scan for the entire vehicle on every module in the vehicle, 
or we can go to control modules. From here, we can see all the individual control modules, and we can go into each one individually. And from once we go into each individual control module, we can scan that one module for codes and erase them. We can get live data, actuation tests, all of that within each individual module. On this truck, we'll just run the quick scan here and we'll see what it has to say just so I can show you how the quick scan works. Otherwise, I don't think there's anything on this truck that needs to be looked at right now. I will fast forward this so you don't get uh, bored watching. Okay, it looks like it's done scanning. I got one fault in the powertrain, which I know it's a bad oil pressure sensor. And we can scroll down here, and I got three faults in the radio, which I'm pretty sure it's just some bad speakers. But to show you how to use this, you click the report button, and then you can scroll down, and it'll give you a full report. So on the powertrain, it says oil, oil engine oil pressure sensor, circuit low voltage. Well, I know that the oil pressure sensor in this truck either sits at zero or 80 PSI, nothing in the middle, so it's a bad sensor. Um, and then, of course, I've got these radio codes, but if you know whatever codes you had, you'd see these down here. We can go back, and then we can save, and it'll save this report. You can save and print, save an email, save, or can't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it, and I'll show you some more with that later. But then we'll, we'll just go back here, and I want to go into control modules. So from here we go in, like I said, you can go into each individual control module, and we'll go to powertrain, and we'll go to active tests. You can either do active tests for engine, automatic transfer case, or transmission. Let's go to engine, for an example. So for this one, instead of turning on one, two, or three fans, I'm just going to turn on all three that way, hopefully, it's loud enough. You can hear it the microphone. Turn them on. Hopefully, you can hear them running. Turn them off. All right, we'll go to uh, try the EAC relay. Turn it on. You can hear it kick on. Turn it off. Turn the AC pump on and off. They really wanted me to show you the actuation tests on this particular scan tool because from the sounds of it, this particular model recently just got that functionality added to it. This scan tool, I don't believe, had the actuation tests or the bi-directional control until recently. So that's why we're looking at it again here is they want to show that it has the actuation tests like some of their, you know, their competitors have now. Passenger door module, active tests, window up and down. Let's try that one. Window down. Here it going down. And let's see if it goes up. Now this one needs a new regulator so it slows down towards the top, but She'll make it. There, she went all the way up. You go back. Let's see uh, door lock and unlock. Let's give that a try. Lock. Unlock. Lock. Unlock. All right. Let's back back out of there. And we'll look at update. Now, when you do the updates, we're away from the Wi-Fi network right now, but that's where you would get your one-touch updates. And I've already updated the scan tool the other day, so it's fully updated. And uh, data manager, here's where you would see your reports. There's the report that we just saved. And you can see it down there. And here's we can turn it into a PDF, and we can either email it or print it. You can, you know, you can put in your mileage and... Uh, plate number. You can make it an official looking report if you need to. And uh, here's where you would see your images and PDF files, data playback. Uh, down here is my account. When you get the scan tool 
and you first turn it on, you have to put in a email address and then click send confirmation code or whatever it says. And then it sends you a code. You got to check your email. Then you type in the code. Then you create a password and type the password a second time. And then you've created an account for Foxwell. And here, if you want to access your account directly from the scan tool, if you had internet signal, you could do that right from here. So that would be your Foxwell account. Settings. Down here, you've got settings for the scan tool software and the scan tool tablet. Uh, both settings are found here in this location. So you've got settings for unit. You know, that unit would be like, whether it be imperial or metric, that type of thing. You've got, uh, and then here's where you would get settings for the actual tablet, the system settings right there. And then if we scroll over, there's remote control. So if you were having problems with something and you got a hold of Foxwell's uh, customer service, and if they needed to, they could remote right into your tablet and see everything you're seeing, and you would do that from here. Firmware, I've already checked. There's no firmware update, but there would be a firmware update right there. VCI manager, if you had something with the vehicle connection interface, I've already checked there. There's nothing. And then functions right here. Again, if you had internet access, which I don't at the moment, you would click that, and it would take you to basically Foxwell's website, and you could look up scanner functionality based on its model. Like this is the NT-809. You could look up the NT-809, and it would tell you everything that it's capable of. And I don't quote me on this, but I believe it'll tell you that on a based on a vehicle make and model basis. So if you look up a specific make and model, and then the scanner, it'll tell you if a certain function is available or not. So that's pretty handy. And I also asked Foxwell a few specific questions that I get a lot in the comments section. And I'm going to put this right here, but I'll put it up on the screen while I read it so you can see it better. Uh, the Foxwell NT-809 details, it's got a one-year manufacturer's warranty, 18 months free update, which is a year and a half, annual update fee after the 18-month free updates is 160 a year for one year. Or... 280 a year for two years, which works out to be 140 a year if you pay for two years at one time. Or 400 for three years, which works out to be 133 a year if you pay for three years at one time. And if you have any questions uh, or tech questions or questions about the tablet itself, you can contact their customer service at Amazon support at foxwelltech.com. But that's about it. The scan tool is very well built. It's easy to read. It's got a very intuitive layout. It has very good functionality. You know, this thing would cover probably 99% of anything you could possibly ever run into as a, as a uh, DIY guy. If you're in the market for OBD2 scan tools and you're shopping for one with bi-directional control, put this one on your list of considerations. It's a worthy contender. All right, guys, that's all I have for now. I appreciate you watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more. See you on the next one.